It's May 2021. I'm 16 years old and I'm sitting in this exam hall at 9am ready to take my final exam. This is where my last five years of education have led up to. And if you're not from the UK, GCSEs is basically the final exam you take at 16 years old. I'm sitting at this little one by one desk on my own in the huge exam hall. There's another 300 people around me. The invigilator is just said to start the paper where it opened in front of me and I've got my pen in my hand. And in 90 minutes, I'm free. And I'll be honest, right? I don't want this to seem like bragging, but I'm not a stupid kid. Like I usually do quite well in exams especially the mock ones that we did earlier so when i saw that this paper was a lot harder than i thought it kind of caught me off guard i was reading the questions and it's like i genuinely just didn't know what to do but it's like that's to be expected right it's like the entire nation is doing this exam it's not going to be so easy that everyone can do it that's the whole point of this so by this point i've gone through like the first like two three questions and i'm like i can't do any of this so i know that at the back of these science papers there's always multiple choice questions and these are the ones that are so much easier so i'm like you know what i can't do any of these front ones let me just start from the back and i'll go back later i'm sitting at my desk and i realized something it was almost like this existential thought like this out of body experience where i realized that i've literally spent the last 10 minutes just reading questions i'd be in this like constant cycle of reading the question not being able to answer it and then rereading the question because i didn't understand the question the first time i read it so it was like 10 minutes in that i realized that this was happening and i've been stuck in this cycle without even noticing earlier and like you know what i mean right it's like you're so tired that you're like your head's on your arm and you're just like reading it from the side it's like by this point my body was like slouched over the table i remember and you know when you have heavy eyelids i think it's called and and it's like you know that if you blink for too long i'm probably gonna fall asleep and it's at this point that i'm realizing yesterday's all night i probably wasn't worth it because i'm sitting in this exam hall with 300 other students and i haven't slept in over 30 hours these guys around me have literally had like a good night's sleep and like they've had two entire nights of sleep my dumb ass has been awake all that time and the reason i was up it was such a stupid reason i had a video that was due that day right so i had a week to do it and my dumb ass as per usual during that time i left it till the last day and in fear of losing that client i did the one thing that i could think and that was stay up editing and get it done so now i'm sitting at this little desk about to fail my final exam because my dumb ass couldn't get a video done in time and that's why I think that being able to edit quickly is so important. Of course, it's important to meet deadlines as well, but for the sake of your outside life too. And the way you do that is just through your workflow. Because you're probably like me, right? We've had so many late nights editing. Like you'd say that you're going to stop working at like 10 p.m. But slowly that becomes 11 and then 12. And then now it's like I'm already up late. Let me just finish this video. Let me just get the music done and everything. And slowly it becomes 1, then 2, sometimes even 3, 4 a.m. And if you're a dumbass like me, you'd probably stay up all night. But I know you've felt this as well where you're stuck in this endless cycle of staying up late to edit then you're too tired to work properly because it is so late so then you barely get any of the video done which means you have to continue staying up to edit the video and then that cycle continues where now you're staying up so you're still tired so you don't get work done and now you have to stay up because the work's not done it's this endless cycle where there's no winning when you stay up so like first of all that main advice i'm going to give you is literally have a dead cut off time that you don't work anymore literally getting a video done the next day you'll probably save like two three times more time than if you were just to stay up so that's my first like basic dead basic advice right but that's not part of this whole video like i'm telling you not to stay up at night right but obviously we still need to get these videos done so wouldn't it be better for us to tackle the problem at its root because the reason i did an all night it wasn't because i just wanted to edit at night it was because i didn't have a workflow in place beforehand it wasn't the night before that fucked up my exam it was that entire week that i didn't do work because you might not see it right now but if you haven't like actively put in work to optimizing and like making your workflow as productive as possible you you don't realize how much you're losing out on you could be making maybe a thousand two thousand extra than you are now but you're being a dumbass and not working on that and you might think right now that like oh man it's no my income right now isn't limited by my workflow it's my editing skill or my portfolio it might be something else but freelancing it rewards speed and that's the beautiful thing about all of this work that we're doing it's like if you can get the same work done in half the time there's like a linear correlation it's like if you get it done in half the time you're getting paid double like me and you are both pretty much working on per project basis right so let's say for the sake of example it's like 200 a video so let's say right now it takes you 10 hours to get a video done so you make $200 in 10 hours so if that was an hourly rate what would that be $20 an hour right but imagine you're able to get that $200 video in two hours that might sound insane but I promise you it's possible and I'm going to be giving you examples of how I've done it myself later in this video so if you're able to get a $200 video done in two hours that's $100 an hour you haven't changed your pricing the video that you're getting done is still the same it's still the same $200 video but suddenly you 
5x your income, your hourly rate. Like I used to get pissed off at these guys that used to say that they're making like a really good amount of money from editing. I remember being in Twitter group chat. So we have this like content editor group chat with all like the biggest editors and stuff. And I remember when I first joined, I didn't join because I was like some big editor. I remember it was just, I knew it's someone else and then they added me into it. So I was surrounded by these huge editors that are working with literally not even the top 1%, like the top 0.01% of creators. Like if you name me any YouTuber right now, I promise you there's an editor for them in that group chat. And these guys were talking about how much they're making. And I remember them talking about like 8K, 9K, 10K, 11K. And I remember I thought they were lying at first. I promise you, I'm like, shut the fuck up, bro. You're not making that much. Like I was making, I think a thousand or 2000 a month at the time, which isn't bad, but shut up, you're making 10, 11K, bro. And you're probably pissed at me as well. Like you're probably gonna be like, oh, why is he talking about like 10K? Like he's like all these other fucking YouTubers are like how to make 10K a month. Like, but that's not what I'm saying. I just want you to open your mind up because what stopped me from making a decent amount of money from editing, it wasn't even my editing skill for the longest time. It was the beliefs I held about myself and the potential that editing had. Cause let's say even like 8K, you probably can't imagine making that right now from editing. Because I know there's gonna be like a few big, really big editors that have like done the same thing that I've done where you guys know that 8K is really possible. And if you're not here yet, you're gonna be pissed at me. You're gonna have this little voice in your head saying that, no, I couldn't. But I want you to just break down the math real quick, right? So let's say right now you're making $500 a video, which even if it sounds insane to you now, I promise you my entire goal right now is to help editors increase their prices and make this a career. So let's say after following all my advice that you find online and stuff, you get to $500 a video. If you can get five videos done a week, which you know is possible, like imagine you had your workflow like a hundred percent productive and efficient you would say that five videos a week in seven days you could get five videos done right five hundred dollars five times a week times that by four bro that is 10k a month like everyone has this big dream of like 10k a month i remember i thought it was stupid i still think that kind of a nonsensical number and everyone kind of talks about it like it's some huge goal but once you reach it you'll realize that it's not that big of a deal like like it's nice to know that you have the capability of doing it and it's nice to hear it for like a couple of months in a row but then after you realize that i'd rather spend my time building new things but if you haven't tasted that like sweetness of hitting your first 10k month i promise you this is worth it the only caveat being that you need to actually get these videos done quite quickly wouldn't you say that your work Flow, which is how fast you're getting things done as well is like when you say that's a decent goal to focus on the thing is everyone knows the importance of a workflow you've probably asked people about workflows you probably think about it quite often be honest with yourself do you actually have a workflow at all like do you have a list of things that you're going to do per edit because that's what a workflow is you know how important a workflow is but you don't even have a workflow in the first place bro like what does your editing session look like now you probably open for me just like dragging your files and then you do the cutting and then you just do some of the effects and then maybe some sound effects oh let me make this animation do the sound effects here and then you just jump around all these tasks but what ends up happening is you're pretty much just editing from emotion you're just working on whatever you feel like in that 30 second block oh you suddenly feel like doing some edits here and then you want to do an animation here oh the sound effects would sound pretty good oh there's this music that popped in my mind let me add that there and it's like you're jumping from task to task so you never enter that flow state that we are most productive in like you've probably heard of flow state right so flow state is basically when you're so focused on a task that the world kind of disappears around you like that sounds really weird but you know when people say like oh you're in the zone it, it's basically that you want to be in this flow state because that's when we're most productive and the way you get into a flow state this is what i've learned from this book called deep work so this book and it's like what this book talks about is there's almost like this buffer period of about 15 20 minutes where the way you get into flow state is you focus on this task for long enough that your brain like automatically diffuses everything else and now the only thing on your mind is that one task and it's important i say here you might think that oh it's all right like i do edit in like long blocks and then i edit like for for a long time and then i get into this flow state but editing isn't a task on its own sure we sit down to edit but within editing there's so many tasks that we could focus on oh we could be cutting we could be doing visual effects we could be doing like whole screen animations we could be doing sound effects we could be doing music we could be doing just like file organization there's so many tasks that come within editing and every time you switch tasks it almost resets that timer that you needed to go into flow state you're in a state of shallow work where your mind's kind of everywhere and you're just thinking so many random thoughts and the way you fix that is by focusing on one very specific task so if it's just cutting then you're just doing cutting if it's visual effects you're just doing visual effects that's how you get into a deep work state and the way we're going to incorporate that into our editing workflow is you're going to be working in layers so you're going to be doing let's say you do cutting first we are going to do for the first however long it takes just cutting if 
we have an idea for visual effects, okay, we can write it down on a piece of paper, but we are not going to do any visual effects or anything else except for cutting the entire video. That doesn't mean cut half the video, edit half the video, then continue cutting, cut the entire video. What happens next? Okay, let's say we're doing visual effects next. You do all of the visual effects in one go. Don't give a fuck about sound effects. Don't care about music. All the visual effects. What next? Let's say sound effects. Okay, we do all the sound effects and so on and so on. Because what happens is after like 15 minutes of let's say starting sound effects, you'll hit this like in the zone type of feeling where you won't realize it in the moment, but you'll get so much work done quicker than you've ever done before. If you haven't read that book, Deep Work, this is something I always recommend to um, my coaching clients purely because it has changed the way that I work like you wouldn't believe how much faster i get videos done just because i implemented like two three things in that book like i'm not some like smart guy where i work like i'm like some work machine bro i'm a lazy prick as well like no one wants to admit it, but i don't like working hard i don't think anyone likes to work hard but what we can do is make the work easier for us and that book literally like taught me how do you get work done in less time which gives you more time to do whatever the hell you want rather than editing so back to workflow like i was saying working in layers and you want to have this physically written down or at least have it like on your pc screen like while you're editing but it's really important that you don't skip this step because like you even know how important a workflow is you're watching this video because you've heard about how important a workflow is and you ask people about it but you don't even have a proper workflow that you're following you're just kind of making it up as you go and if you want my exact workflow like step by step what i do for these huge channels then you can go find that in the description so go over there right now and go follow that link so now we've gotten over that basic advice of actually having a workflow which already puts you ahead of probably 90 percent of editors bro so naturally the next question is how do we optimize our workflow how do we speed it up because what most editors try to do is they try to find this perfect workflow that will be like the magic formula of why they aren't getting videos done in half an hour or less but the reason they're slow at editing the reason that they're missing deadlines the reason they're staying up at night to edit it's not because they have the wrong workflow it's not because it's not 100% optimized it's because they're not able to leverage like consistency and muscle memory to their workflow because editing it's almost like a game right like we used to like play Fortnite back in the day and like we'd play like fucking Minecraft and stuff so you would understand that if you have like certain buttons to press for a game would you ever change all your key binds and would you change your game settings and your sensitivity every single time you play obviously not right like you'd literally be shit at the game for the rest of your life there's no like perfect settings for minecraft there's no perfect settings for like competitive fortnite you get good at those settings when you stick at it long enough and premiere is literally the exact same it's like you're in the software and you're gonna get faster and you're gonna get better and you're gonna get more used to it when you've stuck with the same setting for a long enough time even if those settings aren't 100 percent optimized even if they're like 80 percent of like your the best settings that they could be you sticking at it long enough will put you ahead of everyone else so what happens when an editor some dumbass he finds a workflow that he thinks works he does it for two videos maybe maybe a week at most and then he's on to the next workflow trying something else and he's like oh tomorrow let me try something new it's like you're changing settings every single time you play the game why do you think that you're not getting faster bro so i need you to understand that consistency with a good workflow which i've given you already it always beats trying to change your workflow every single time to find this like holy grail of workflows like to find this perfect workflow you're sacrificing that consistency and muscle memory that you could have built with the workflow that you worked before a long time and the thing is i know that most of you probably you as well bro like most people aren't going to follow what i just said in this so you're going to like get off this video and you're going to watch something else and then you're going to be editing next time and you're just going to do the same thing that i talked to you about in here it's like you're just going to edit whatever you feel like doing and you're not even going to have a workflow written out but you're still going to bitch about oh i don't get videos done in time my workflow isn't perfect enough Malice, can you help me with finding a good workflow but bro i've told you exactly what you need to do i've given you my workflow as well and most people here are just gonna like fucking leave this video and just continue editing like they were before like what was the point of watching this then do you know what i mean so it's like right now you basically have two options genuinely if you are going to implement this advice like if you were just like watching over it mindlessly i would go back and watch it but honestly if you are going to implement the advice i genuinely see a lot of potential in you but if you're not going to like i don't want you to li watch like th there's not much of the video left but you might as well just click off now in it like you're not going to get value out of this so you might as well click off if you're not going to take actions from what you're learning but if you are going to actually implement what i'm teaching you the shit that i've learned over like three years of editing i want you to understand that you're genuinely making such a good decision here because most editors out there they understand that oh their job is to edit videos but they don't go out of their way to actually learn how to become a better 
better editor not only visually because visuals of course are important but actually how do you balance it as a career as a job because that's what it is at the end of the day like you're working under these creators that are pretty much businesses like they're making money you're dealing with like thousands a month your business and for you to treat it like that rather than the 99% who honestly they still treat it as a hobby sure we all started as a hobby but deep down you know that you would love to make a good amount of money from editing from what started as your hobby and now you're going to be editing for these huge creators you would like that and i know there's going to be someone that's like oh no i still enjoy editing as a hobby i don't even need the money but i don't understand it like i used to be in the same situation so i kind of do actually but you're going to be sitting at the same desk right like this desk that i'm sitting at now when i edited as a hobby it was the same desk i'm i'm sitting in the same room i'm working from like the same pc the only difference is i'm still doing what i was doing as a hobby but i'm making money as well and when you do work and you, like your workflow and balancing your editing stuff what ends up happening is you actually spend less time editing like you still get the same work done but you're able to enjoy your life more because the people that really succeed in this space the editing space it's not the people that are the best at editing because let's be real like there's editors better than me there's editors better than you to be the number one at anything is very hard but what you can do is last longer than them because that number one guy what usually happens to him is he ends up burning out and we don't want to be this guy that has our one month of fame and we just fall off because we got so burnt out and we want to kill ourselves because we've been editing for like four four months straight every single day for 15 hours like that's not what we want to be we just want to be in the top few percent which is very doable for you and we just want to stay consistent with it because when you're able to stick with something for a year for two years for three years let's be real after a while it becomes kind of hard to be shit at something like if you've been working at the same thing consistently for three years you're probably not going to be shit at it by the end of it right like we're getting to the end of the video now and there's maybe only 20 30 percent of people watching so if you look at the view count imagine only 20 percent of you are watching so if you're watching this now you're part of that 20 percent what's interesting is even from that small percentage that are still watching it's so sad that only two three percent of everyone watching now is gonna actually listen to any of this like they spent the last 10 15 minutes however long this video is they spent that long watching and they're just gonna continue the same way that they are they're not gonna get any value out of this because they're not gonna implement what we've talked about and what's even sadder is those editors the ones that don't listen they're gonna be the same ones that you're hearing that are like bitching about deadlines and they're gonna talk to you and be like oh i have this client I need to get done but yeah, he's got some tight deadlines and realistically it's like they don't even have bad deadlines they get like a week to do the video but they just work like a dumbass and i really don't want you to end up like that bro like you don't understand how much potential you have from editing you started this as a hobby sure but i talk about this all the time with the people that i coach you have a set of skills that the marketplace values the only reason creators hire editors is because we're valuable and why wouldn't you work on that and like you already have the skill set you know how to edit you you've already started watching videos like this you know what to do why would you throw that away i genuinely don't see any gain to not listening to advice like this like it only has a net positive like by you getting your workflow done let's say it frees up two hours of your time even if you don't want to spend that two hours editing bro you freeing up two hours of your time by work having a good workflow and sticking with a workflow long enough that you have good muscle memory with it even if you don't use that extra two hours to edit bro you can use it to just live your life like there's no downside to you listening to advice like this you're probably not going to believe me but i promise you the guys that i coach i have messages up that i'm not going to try like prove it. i don't give a shit if you don't believe me but these guys do DM me talking about how I've changed their lives and their parents are like finally taking editing seriously because I was able to teach them just what I know and the thing is it's not even because they were special they weren't able to take my advice because they were better at editing or like they were the number one editor in the entire world or they had like fucking rich parents or some shit that's not why they did well your brain's gonna come up with all these excuses of why you couldn't do the same thing but these guys they just had the humility to listen to someone that's already done it and I think that for you you to understand that there are certain things that you are doing wrong and there are certain things that you are doing right of course you are i mean you've gotten to this point because you've done so much right and just imagine that you were able to achieve what all these other editors that you see at the top are doing just by taking the right steps by literally following the steps of someone else that's done it before i think it'd be such an honor for me to be able to teach you how to do the same thing that i did because editing has changed my life and it'd be so beautiful for me to help you do the same